Hearing will come to order. Uh, let me just explain to everybody that regrettably we are running tighter than uh, we want to be. I've got to get to the banking committee markup before too long. So we need to be somewhat in summary. And some of the documents uh, can be placed in the record. We will release some of the documents that explain some of uh, what is going on. So if you summarize and we put the documents in, I think we're going to have the record that we need in terms of uh, this issue. May I continue? Sí. Thank you very much. I was just talking about the February 10th, 87 document uh, coordinating a uh, trip of Mr. Chaffee to Peru to have a meeting with President Garcia. This was not to talk about the floods, quite obviously, floods that were going on in Peru at the time. I must say that in February of 1987, the deposits of Peru and BCCI went up to $261 million in ex excess of $61 million over the limit. This was the maximum excess over the limit throughout the whole period. Here I have another document talking about Alberto Calvo. This is a document to Al from Alberto Calvo to Mr. Chaffee of BCCI, the Latin American Caribbean Office, regional office. July 21st, when the reports were received, negative reports about BCCI in Panama, meaning that the Reserve Bank was considering withdrawing its deposits. Here I have this document which talks about a conversation with Alberto Calvo, who is not a BCR or BCCI or a Peruvian official. This is a conversation with Daniel Carboneto, who is an advisor of the President of the Public talking about how it's possible that steps are being taken to have a new conversation with President Garcia to see what can happen or what can be done about Peru's uh, uh, deposits. We will give you this document I, I so it can uh, Just tell me for the be on the who, record. Who is Alberto Calvo? El diputado Pedro Cateriano le puede emplear. Uh, Mr. Cateriano can tell you. We have uh, investigated who Mr. Calvo is, and we received the information that this is a banker managing Latin American relations for BCCI. He is an Argentine national. El señor Alberto Calvo Mr. Alberto Calvo relaciones had antes de estar en el BCCI. relations before he was in BCCI in the Inter-American Bank where he had some relations with Peruvian officers also working in the Inter-American Bank. Now this, uh, let me just say, this memo which I'm going to put in the record that follows the previous memo uh, of the February 10th, this memo uh, talks about further meetings uh, and says that they agree to meet with the president of the central bank one week after he takes office and after that they will visit with the president of the republic. So this is BCCI talking about top level meetings between the president of the central bank and the president of the republic. Is that correct? Okay. Let me just try to speed this along a little bit. There's a subsequent, uh, there is a subsequent July 21st, 1987 memo, which is also from Mr. Alberto Calvo, also to Mr. Shafi. Uh, no, I'm, I'm on the wrong one here, excuse me. There is an August 25th memo from Mr. Alberto Calvi to Mr. Shafi. And that memo talks about the relation with the Central Bank of Peru. And it he talks a about friend. correct and a meeting with a friend. It talks about the central bank continuing its present operational relationship with BCC if the line of credit could be increased. Is that correct? 
Was the line of credit at that time increased? There was a statement that the line of credit would be increased, and we think that the person that had the meeting... Well, I don't want to, I don't want to ask who you think it was. I mean, do you know who it was? Do you know who was at the meeting? You don't know who was at the meeting. Well, then let's just leave out. I don't want any guessing. All right, well, this memo will also be made part of the record. Now, are there any other memoranda that you have? Excuse me. Then there's a... Is there any other memorandum or letter or document pertaining to BCCI meetings with respect to these transactions? No, no not for now. But what we have to say is that the Re Reserve Bank being autonomous in nature is made up of four representatives of the executive branch named by the President and three members named by the Senate. During Garcia's presidency, uh, the, his party had a majority and named the president, as president a person who had been the secretary of the presidency. So it has been proven that there, that there was no reason for Alan Garcia to have been in any of this. I would like to say very briefly what happened with the Mirage. This is a case which really deserves your attention, if you will allow me. I, I, we need to do it, but we need to do it quickly. <laughs> very quickly. In August of 1986, Peru decided it would not make profits, substantial profits on the sales of 14 mirages. This was a decision that the proven government made to get rid of these mirages because they could not, Peru could not afford to pay Marcel Dasso anymore. But it could resell these uh, planes to another country. This uh, was in the sales contract with Marcel Dasso and appeared in three different paragraphs. But, we, but Peru did not do this. According According to uh, uh, statements made by the representative of the government, the statements made in the uh, committee I preside, these sales were not made to third countries because this was not authorized by President Alan Garcia. The damage to the country and uh, the profit to third parties resides in the fact that the market price of these 14 mirages, the price which was paid for each plane at that time was $37 million. As in the statement of the Peruvian negotiator Hector Delgado Parker, what Peru had to pay to Marcel Dasso, the manufacturer for each plane, because these planes were contracted for in 1982 to be, ma uh, to be manufactured later, were $12 million. That is to say there was a difference of $25 million per aircraft. Peru, however, did not make this uh, transfer to third countries, for which all it needed to do was get the approval of the French government. We have discovered, however, by uh, Mr. Morgenthau's work that this operation ended up as a resale. BCCA ended up being the resales agent, and uh, the London office of BCCI approved this sale. And according to what we've heard, there was a falsification of documents to hide the country, which was the final destination of these aircraft. We have received information that this plane was Iraq was alleged to be Iraq during the period of Saddam Hussein. This true customer was being hidden because arms traffickers, international arms traffickers, uh, were but you don't, involved me, in this. So let me interrupt you. May, may I interrupt you, Working please? in BCCI of London. But, but again, you're, uh, this is something that is not fully documented yet, correct? This is an accusation? Is that accurate? 
Those documents the documents in the uh, exist in Mr. Morgenthau's office. They are in an investigation phase, and that is why we are stating this here in the Kerry Commission to ask for the cooperation of international authorities so that we can clarify this. Mr. Morgenthau's people think that there was a hundred million dollar uh, gap, and we think it's between 150 and 200 million dollars. Sir, this requires an investigation, obviously. We have gotten a statement from Mr. Morgenthau for Peruvian television. This was uh, broadcast to our whole country. And there he affirms that this negotiation caused Peru to lose $100 million. And BCCI was apparently linked to this. This is something we need to go into. I agree. Let, let me just say, there is absolutely no disagreement for me. Uh, it is something that needs to be gone into, uh, but this is not the place where we're going to be able to resolve it uh, and get at it. And, and what, I've, what I've been trying to establish here is, are really the questions uh, without, uh, without uh, uh, unfairly making any accusations in it, though the accusations have already been made specifically by the indictment, by Bob Morgenthau, and by your commission. There are certain things that are on the table and you can't avoid those, and I, I agree with that. But again, I don't want to go through every detail of them because there is no way that this committee uh, can sort that out. What we're trying to do is show the degree to which BCCI and its, its mo method of operation and the personalities and people who were involved with it have in fact created a situation in your country and in other countries where now people are left picking up the pieces and trying to sort it out. And in addition to that, uh, to show the way in which uh, by high level uh, operations and conversations and meetings it appears as though they've left many people wondering what happened to the procedures in countries. That is not true only of Peru. It is true in, in some 60 nations or so. And it is true very much right here in the United States. So we share that. Now having said that, I, I have to terminate the part of the inquiry in terms of just the factual part here. We will receive as a committee through staff further documents so that our report capacity and analysis capacity will remain so we can do that. I'd like to ask you one question, if I may, just to, you know, and, and that is, uh, has your effort to get at this as an investigative body been hindered by the bank secrecy laws? Has that made it difficult to find out what's happened here? Definitely. We have to state that present legislation favors the criminal, unfortunately. And the action of justice meets many obstacles. The information and the controls which are necessary are not forthcoming in order to, and this allows uh, crime to be committed through legally constituted financial institutions. I think the situation has to be corrected. And I don't want to finish if this is my final statement without. No, I'll come back to you for a final statement. Let me just ask Ms. Flores. Would you tell me to what extent Peru is threatened by drug money laundering and drug trafficking, and what has been the impact on Peruvian life of this kind of corporate activity? Let me tell you with numbers something which is a, a, a movement of money regarding with drugs. Peru receives or moves around $2,000 million a year from money coming from, land, from uh, drugs. That means that in all our foreign relationships and reestablishing uh, credits and, and, and financial relationships with other countries, it is a very big problem to think that we could avoid the money we are taking from drugs. It is around 2,000 million a year of money moving through drugs. 
when, when, you, when you say 2,000 million, I think we're probably losing something in the currency conversion here, conceivably. Two, two, two mi so, I'm sorry, two million dollars. I'm sorry, excuse me, two million dollars. <laughs> On this same subject, I want to give you just two examples. But I need, no, I need to ask you, I must be fair. I have, uh, I have a neighboring country of yours waiting in the back here. And I, and I really want to ask you for the summary statement, very briefly, sí. if I can. Yes, sir. Sí. Sí, yo yes, I will conclude saying that on this subject, in the upper Huayaga Valley, there were four planes which went to pick up money every week. And uh, this was detect it was detected that one citizen who was just a peasant had changed $6 million in just one month. And finally, we discovered he was connected to cocaine. And between 1985 and 1990, the number of acres went from 20,000 to 25,000 acres, and it's very difficult not to connect all of this thing to increased drug trafficking uh, involvement. We need the cooperation of the authorities of the United States and the authorities of the rest of the world to achieve the goals of our investigation, i.e. justice. We need to recognize uh, the work done by uh, Mr. Morgenthau. We want to be very clear about the shared feelings we have to, uh, uh, and of cooperation with what you are doing. We are getting cooperation from other bodies, and but not as much. So we would like to ask for cooperation from the Department of Justice, the Department of uh, the Treasury, the uh, Customs, and other offices in the Federal Reserve, for, in, for example, to awake their consciousness so they'll realize that this is a fight for justice, that this is a fight for justice, and they cannot use bureaucratic procedures to deny cooperation in this fight for justice in our desire to uh, defend the rule of law and which will allow us once and for all to defeat corruption and to uh, get to those who are the first and primary violators of human rights in Peru, which are the terrorists, uh, uh, so that there will be no quarter given them uh, by our government. So I would like to thank Thank you. On behalf of my uh, committee, I hope that we will continue this very uh, fluid cooperation that we have had up to now. Thank well, you. I want to thank each of you for taking the time to be here. And uh, let me just say that as chairman of the Narcotics Committee, we have sat here in this room and listened to our own Assistant Secretary of State for Narcotic uh, Affairs talk to us about uh, the problems in Peru. I am personally very aware of the difficulties in the Hualaga Valley. Uh, the efforts and dangers that are going on there, and the great tensions uh, in your society as a consequence of both the uh, uh, Sendero Luminosa as well as the whole problem of drug trafficking linked to those kinds of efforts. And, and I simply say to you that uh, banks that involve themselves in laundering that money are as much a part of the problem as anybody else who's involved in the entire line and chain of command. And so you've raised many questions. We haven't answered a whole lot of them here today, and I think one has to say that. But the questions are very legitimate. They're very real, and they need to be addressed. And I think uh, we will proceed here to continue to try to gather information and understand this. It's very clear that BCCI uh, launched uh, one of those offenses that we've heard about in order to secure these uh, funds and deal in Panama and present itself uh, falsely. And I think that, uh, uh, that there's a great deal more of the story, though, yet to be told. But I want to thank you very much. We appreciate it. If I could ask uh, the next panel quickly, because we really only have about uh, 20 more minutes here to continue. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I will. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can we do the change now, Mr. Castillo? Um, 
I don't. I, I, I think, Mr. Castillo, that there, it's my impression that there is not really a need for you to testify very much because I think we tried to steer clear of the gravamen of any of the offenses. If you have something that you want to clarify in a couple of minutes, I would be delighted. But it was my sense there, there's not a great deal to address. Am I incorrect? I will I be happy I want to be fair so if you would raise your hand raise your right hand please Do you promise to tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth so help you God All right If you would say I want this to be as brief as we can make it Is there something specific with respect to the BCCI that you can add or to the testimony you've heard that you want to address in fairness would you identify yourself, please, for the record? Señor Senador, mi nombre es Jorge del Castillo. My name is Jorge del Castillo. I am a deputy in Peru II, representing the Aprista Party, and I am a member of the investigating committee in which uh, the other people who preceded me uh, are serving. I want to be very specific here and brief in honoring your request. Irresponsible yeah, accusations let me just, let me just say made. to you, no, no, no. there were no accusations made here that are not part of the indictment. So, I, and we're not going to try the indictment here. So if there's something that was said specifically here that is incorrect, that, then I want you to address that, but we're not going to go into whether or not the indictment is correct or incorrect. Okay. No, I'm not talking about Morgenthau's indictment. I'm talking about the comments on the Mirage business, for instance. Let me start Fair there. Fair enough. Be delighted. It seems that there is a confusion here with uh, Deputy Oliveira when he involves the contract of the Peruvian Mirages with BCCI. When the meeting or the session began, you had not come in yet, but Senator Cranston read some documents connecting an opera operation, an Argentine operation of the Mirages with BCCI, not Peru. Peru bought from Marcel Dasso, a state-owned enterprise of France, Un total de 26 aviones a total of 26 aircraft between 82 and 84. Antes Before, de que el doctor Alan García fuera Dr. presidente, en esa García was Perú, el president. Fernando Belaunde Terry. Fernando Belaunde Terry was Cuando president at the time. El Alan García, when Dr. Alan García became president, and I'm going to give you a specific document on this. But, but the issue here, the issue here, on the on the mirage sí. is not really the the record previously the issue as i understood it was that bcci facilitated a sale that was made to a middle eastern country now that's the issue is is that true or not true yeah. This is not true. Okay. The government of Peru, under President Alan Garcia, the same day, the 28th of July 1985, as he took power, announced that since Peru was a poor country, it could not be spending money on weapons. And therefore, instead of buying 26 planes, he had given orders to reduce the orders. This was a restructuring of the contract which was done directly between the Peruvian government and the French government. And I am going to give you a, the signed documents by the foreign ministers of Peru, Alan Wagner and the French uh, uh, foreign minister as well, restructuring this contract. Peru is not a country which is aggressive, nor one which encourages wars uh, with sir, other countries. Therefore, the question, it would not resell planes. Okay, the question is whether or not BCCI 
was part of a transaction for the sale of weapons. For the, were mirages sold? Did Peru sell mirages to another country? Peru did not sell planes to other countries. It cut its contract back in a direct contract with the French government, government to government, without any middlemen. So it's your testimony then that no planes were ever transferred from Peru to any other country? For, in no way, okay. At no time. So let me let me move away from that because I'm not here. We're not here to get into the fact. You know, I'm not going to be the decider of fact between this. You've stated on the record it didn't happen. They've stated on the record that it did happen. And as I said, a lot of questions have been raised here. The question I ask you is with respect to BCCI. Is is there anything that you have heard with respect to BCCI? that is factually incorrect or that you can help the committee to understand better? Because the, the dispute with respect to President Garcia, as I said at the outset, is not for this committee to decide. I've tried to steer the people who testified a moment ago away from any uh, accusations. I'm not here to hear them. We know what's out in public. What I want to know is about BCCI. And so I'm confident that in Peru this issue is going to be litigated, investigated, decided. It's not here that it should happen. And, and I have tried to acknowledge that there is a total other side to that. There is no effort here to say that, that uh, President Garcia did, didn't, did know, didn't know, did something or didn't do something. And, and I accept your statement on its face. There's a controversy. And we can't resolve it. We're not here to resolve it. So if you could help me with respect to BCCI, uh, is there a fact that you can show me by document or otherwise that is uh, incorrect in our current understanding of BCCI's relationship with Peru? Yes, I will discuss that. And I will try not to get off the subject. I am going to give you the documents to conclude the prior uh, subject on the French and I will make those the government to government contract. Thank you. BCCI, Mr. Chairman, came to Peru in 1984. Probably it was a source of surprise in Peru. Uh, as in 60 other countries as well, how much good faith people had. As you know, it seems that when any bank wants to get into a country, it wants to get into touch and contact with important groups of people in the country. And in March of 1984, BCCI in Peru asked for authorization from the superintendency of banks and insurance to set up a branch. So you will see the level of reliability that a bank, a very apparently very solid bank, seemed to have at that time, BCCI, to ask for this authorization, asked for and got the legal advice of a very important law firm in Peru. And here, in uh, exhibit number one that I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a sealed copy dated March 14, 1984, from the superintendency, superintendency showing that, per, that BCCI asked for permission to set up a branch. And it says that its legal domicile will be the law office of Sterling, Arias, and Davis and Associates which is a very well-known law firm. Dr. Sterling, who is a person that all of us respect and cannot possibly be suspected of anything 
illegal. He is the, a member of Dr. Lunes Flores's uh, party and is the president of the Peruvian Senate. He's beyond reproach. This is uh, exhibit number one. In 1984, the superintendency, in a uh, document in November, asked the central bank to process the approval. I am giving you a list of all of the central bank staff members from 1980 to 1990. Here there is a very interesting person who was the general manager of the central bank between 1980 and 84. Until October of 84. Remember that BCCI's request came in March and he was there until October. They say in Lima, and this is a saying, a speculation, I recognize that this same person, the general manager, was the promoter of BCCI in Peru. This person is called Brian Jensen Ruyo. In 1984, Mr. Brian Jensen Ruyo resigned from this post at the central bank and he moved to Miami. And in Miami, he was named manager of BCCI. So if anyone knows about the links of Peru with BCCI, it is Brian Jensen, because he had been general manager of the central bank and because he was later a Miami manager of BCCI. Brian Jensen, until yesterday, was representative in Peru, named by the Minister of Economy, Carlos Bologna, uh, the representative of Peru to the World Bank. Yesterday, though, the, the president of Peru, Alberto Fujimori, dismissed him from this position when he learned of evidence that this person, Brian Jensen, was allegedly a link to BCCI. And he lives in Washington now, and I think it would be interesting for you to hear his testimony. He was general manager starting January 19, 1981 until October 1984. When BCCI already had six, had been working uh, six or seven months, or had been working for six or seven months to try to set up its branch in Peru. The branch in Peru was approved by the director of the central bank, February 1st, 1985. We are still talking about the prior administration before Dr. Garcia. Can, can you get into the 1986 and 7 stage where the transaction began in terms of the credit line? Yes, I just want to read two lines of the director's report of uh, February 1985. This board of directors is made up of uh, very serious people. I think all of them uh, are, have impeccable reputations in the country, and I am sure that they were all surprised, as, as Dr. Sterling was, and as many other people uh, who are honest and of good faith must have been. The re Report said, or the agreement said, the board feeling that the opening of uh, and of a foreign bank at this point shows confidence in our country and taking into account that this is a bank which is presently one of the most important in the world and nothing has been found against it, the board has decided to act in favor of the request. This same report includes an authorization of the superintendency, and I am including the uh, documents, the official documents which appeared in uh, the press in Lima, establishing uh, this branch. Later, this branch was not actually set up, but all of these steps were taken by the public authorities of Peru so that it could have been set up. In 1986, February, April 1st, 1986, and I am 
sending the text of the board uh, of directors report. The decision was taken by the board of the central bank to establish a corresponding relationship and deposits. And I don't want to refer to more details because Mr. Yaque has explained all of this very clearly indeed. It was the director of BCCI in July that said it was necessary to revise some factors or let me, some let me, areas. Let me, I hate to interrupt you here, but as you know, I promised I would give you an opportunity to respond to the prior panel. I can't go through another entire panel of testimony separately now. If, if you want to do that at some point, we can talk about it, but I've got to ask you to, to strictly, I mean, you know, we could go through the entire history from a different perspective and we'll sit here and sort it out. I think the key question is, and let me come to some key questions. Uh, it has been asserted by the investigative team as they have spoken that there are irregularities in the way that the line of credit was extended and that there are significant questions in Peru. Uh, leaving President Gar let's leave the President completely out of this. Let's assume there's no President Garcia, there's nobody. Just the way BCCI worked when, the, when, when suddenly the government made a decision that it needed some credit and went to Panama. Now, why did it go to Panama? What, it, it, was there something about the way BCCI worked? Do you find that? Or do you think BCCI is a terrific bank with no problems? Mr. Chairman, I'm going to refer to the Peruvian Constitution, and I'm going to leave you a copy of it. But there it says that the central bank is an autonomous body. It does not depend on the executive branch. I accept that. This is so very is it, but, but, but answer my question. I mean, I take it that what you're saying is that the BCCI relationship was bad, but that somebody else had something to do with that, and, and that not the president. Is that what you're saying to us? Claro. The only officers responsible for the BCCI matter were the members of the board, no one else. Yesterday okay, the members Lima, of the board of the Federal Reserve are responsible, correct? Is that what you're saying? All right. Yes, sir. Was BCCI a good bank to deal with or not? Yes or no? I don't know this background. I have come with the purpose, as you know, of stopping, and you have not allowed this to happen, fortunately, but stopping undue links to be drawn here. I don't judge BCCI pro or con. Fair enough, and I appreciate your comment. Uh, because I wanted to bend over backwards not to have uh, any linkages here. This is not a place where we're looking for, uh, you know, to, to, as I have said, to try to sort out uh, uh, the gravamen of the accusations. It's a place where we want to understand people's view of BCCI. Now, from your perspective, can you share with the committee a view of BCCI. If you don't have knowledge of that, then uh, I will make part of the record. Any clarification you have of any comment to which you object. Uh, but I don't want to take the time now because of the gentleman from Argentina who's waiting, and I want to get some of that on the, on the table because it's important as to Argentina's experience with BCCI. Senator, it's been said here that uh, Mr. Morgenthau allegedly made a link between President Garcia and BCCI regarding presumed bribes. And we have begun an investigation in Peru on this. But I have, and I am leaving you, a cable, an EFE cable, which was the 
only one that referred to a question of this sort. And this press release says... Si el expresidente del Perú, Alan García, asked if President Alan Garcia uh, in Perú, was being investigated in Peru regarding his links with the VCCI, if this Morgan was co connected to the bribes, Morgan Thaw said no. I leave this with you because there's no evidence that Morgan Thaw said anything different from this. All right. Let me, let me just say to you, Mr. Castillo, I respect that. And, and the committee accepts what we have heard today completely neutrally with respect to President Garcia. And I want the press to understand that. And I make it very clear for the record. Uh, as far as we are concerned, that is outside of this committee at this time. Uh, it is between the people of Peru and its own government and its own processes for determining that, and it is between Mr. Morgenthau and his indictment process, which is totally separate from here. Uh, but what I want to simply uh, try to understand, uh, unless there is documentary evidence of something, and then obviously we're going to accept that. But at the moment, we're really trying to get a picture of the questions that have been raised by this. The mere fact that this is happening in Peru is, is, is a fallout from BCCI. That is, in effect, one of the repercussions of this. The fact that there was a soft credit line, if you will, with an imbalance in the amount of credit for the amount of, uh, uh, of cost the fact that it had to go to Panama and BCCI was so prepared to help a country find a way around uh, the laws and went to Panama and had secret accounts and so forth raises the very kinds of issues that we're trying to raise. And while nothing is dispositive here of any of those issues, that's what we're trying to show. In a sense, your very conflict is itself uh, a statement about BCCI and the kind of operation that it has left behind it. And these are, this is the wake, if you will. This is the fallout. Uh, those uh, banking institutions or those institutions that perform above the board and so forth don't have these kinds of accusations flying around them and don't leave these kinds of question marks, hopefully. So uh, I think that it has served its purpose of, of, of leaving in people's minds uh, the sense that it came in, offered itself where other banks wouldn't go, provided an opportunity to get around uh, the uh, legitimate credit interests of the rest of the banking world, uh, took advantage of uh, a country's plight in that respect, uh, made money off it, and left a lot of chaos in its wake. And uh, as I say, nothing here is dispositive of any of that. But I, I genuinely want you to feel that this record is open to you. And if there's any comment that you feel you need to make publicly, because putting it in the record is not sufficient, I want to give you a last opportunity to do that now. If there's something you think that ought to be said, if you could just, if you could take one last moment. Muy, muy breve. I'll be eh, very brief. Se ha hecho bien en no comentar ni aceptar un comentario. It was very sobre, good not to accept eh, presunta, presunta comments on presumed BCCI, or alleged no bribes eh, by BCCI, eh, not to Morgan these uh, officers no, mentioned by Mr. Morgenthau, but having to do with uh, the president having accounts poder, at BCCI. Kerry, in your power, uh, you have uh, records from all the banks, without bancos, exception, all the banks mentioned in the report reports of Kroll and Bellar, no uh, no proving that these accounts don't, ex don't exist. Not only are these uh, from BCCI, but these Dallas, are from the Sunbelt Sun Bank of Dallas, the Societe Generale from France, the Societe Santander of, uh, you, from you're Spain. You're putting in the record things that never came out previously. <laughs> I mean, none of this was talked about. Sí. Por eso. Yes. Pero, eh, señor senador, eh, but, Senator, no se han hablado acá, they haven't been talked about here, prensa, well, but in the press. Well, I understand, but we're not here to try to sift out what's been out in the press. 
And, and I think the other side very respectfully, very respectfully heeded to my earlier caution. So, so I think it's really fair not to make this committee now the recipient of uh, any rebuttal of something that hasn't been set forth. So on that note, it, I, I would like to, again, I leave the record open for you to submit some of this, uh, but I'm not going to uh, receive it at this point in time, if that's fair. Does that? De acuerdo, señor senador, voy a concluir. Very well, I will uh, conclude. Efectivamente. Uh, Esos son temas refutados These en are um, matters to be refuted in eh, other bodies. What I would like to que, say, que, usted me mi you asked me what my impression was BCCI. about this whole BCCI business. General, my general si impression, without admitting any value judgment about this bank, which I see is a bank with multiple evidence mundo. of uh, corruption Pero in many parts of the world, but my impression es que is Perú, that when it went to Peru in 1984 and later in 86, this evidence that we have now was not known at that time. BCCI uh, worked in London until two weeks ago. It's had offices until the last year here in the United States, if I'm not mistaken, in Peru. En que llegó y sorprendió. Where it came and surprised people, but the people of the central bank in 1987, uh, on their own initiative, decided to reduce uh, BCCI, their deposits in BCCI. But I think this was a decision which is sort of uh, indicative of what we are seeing now. And I I think that here there's been an attempt to have coincide certain meetings held by the president with BCCI people. I say supposed meetings because uh, they haven't been proven. Nobody knows who this Riso Patron even is. He's not an officer or an official of the Peruvian government. I don't know who Oscar Riso Patron even is. Calvo, I don't know who he is either. These people have been mentioned. Well, let me. Let me just say that it's very obvious that BCCI has left investigators in Peru a lot to do, investigators in London a lot to do, investigators in New York and uh, Washington and all around the world. It's too bad uh, that uh, so much investigative effort is going to have to be consumed by this one enterprise, but obviously it is. I want to thank you very much for also taking the time, and I respect enormously as a fellow parliamentarian your efforts uh, in this and and uh, if there is any further statement you want to submit to the staff here we'd be happy to receive it if I could ask uh, the last uh, panel to come forward I would appreciate it very much I just want to thank you for your courtesy and for the opportunity you've given me thank you to uh, speak and I appreciate think you've acted with great Justice. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that comment very much. Muchas gracias. Can we get the last? Uh, thank you. Sorry to be so long. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. And this is the book. Okay. Thank you very, very much. All right. See you later. Thanks. Um, somewhere. Where are they? Yeah, I do. I have them right here. Here they are. Okay, and then there's another list for Mr. Where is he? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Two billion dollars. I'll clarify it. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. the former Secretary of Defense, which is the sub-ministerial position in the Defense Ministry, and he was also Deputy Foreign Minister uh, Noel Alfonsin. Uh, uh, Jesus Rodriguez was Alfonsin's last economy minister. Uh, Jesus has got the beer. Okay. 